Better safe than sorry, mask in hand. Better safe than sorry, Sharon Horn Alston here with Supersize Your Business. And our idiom, our expression, our proverb today is better safe than sorry. Now, this is one of those idioms that was created long before it actually appeared in writing. A gentleman by the name of Samuel Lover in the 17th century in his novel Rory O'More used the term better safe than sorry. Originally, it was more like better sure than sorry, but there's actually over 215 different varieties, different synonyms, different things that mean the same thing for the expression better safe than sorry. So do we have a high emphasis on safety and security and precaution in our world? We certainly do now since COVID-19. Quick question, how many of you prior to COVID-19 honestly had contingency plans in place for your business, for your for your family, for your life? Did you have an emergency plan? Emergency action plans, we call them in corporate America. And when I was in corporate America, we always had them. Every year we would review and go over our emergency action plan or our contingency plan. Now, <clears throat> I would admit, we added terrorism and acts of terror to our contingency plans, geez, and probably sometime in the, probably after 9-11 for sure. So sometime in the 2000s, we in the early 2000s, we added contingency plans for acts of terror, terrorists. What would we do to it? What would happen to our business if there was a terrorist attack that had uh, an impact on how we operated our business? But we never, I never until 2020 even considered the possibility of a pandemic. Now, I, it just never came up. It never crossed our minds. And I'm curious how many of you have a contingency plan in case of a health challenge or a pandemic now as part of your contingency plan, your action plan, your emergency action plan, what you're going to do if something happens, um, your what ifs, whatever it is, and how formal are those plans? And have you, of course, of course, if you're still operating your business, you've put different changes and aspects of a plan in place. Uh, but how has that changed your process of planning for different types of emergencies and have you added pandemic? I know I have. Uh, never thought of it before, but I definitely had to add it. I grew up uh, and raised my kids, especially with the motto of safety first. Now, I, not when I was a little kid. I was a little rabble rouser. But with my kids, our motto, and I probably learned it from corporate America and leading safety teams and things uh, in one of my corporate jobs, but we had a high emphasis on safety. And safety, you, you do everything to the best of your ability. You follow the processes and the procedures, but you have to do it in a safe and efficient and effective way. And so when my kids were born, when my son was born, I he was uh, definitely a bouncing off walls little man. And so safety first became kind of our motto, our, our, our little, at least the kids and I motto. And my, my ex too was pretty safety conscious, but he was a lot more risk taking when it came to physical activity than I was with the kids. So safety first is always a, a consideration. Now we don't want to err on the side of over being overly cautious and overly safe it, to the point where it freezes us and we never take actions because we're afraid to take any risks, but we want to actually plan things out. You know, in our organizations, we want to be the keeper of the big vision. What's the direction, the mission, the purpose of this organization? Why do we even exist? We want to always be shining the light of that and then breaking down how we're going to get there through our goals and objectives and our uh, our action steps and things. But we, have, we put systems and structures in place to ensure quality and safety of the people that work in our organization and are creating the products with us, as well as the people we interact with and our customers, right? We have insurance in our businesses to mitigate risk. We find ways to do risk reversal by looking for guarantees in the products and services and the people that we work with, the vendors that we use and choose to do business with, as well as offering some sort of guarantee to the customers and the people that we serve. Uh, so those are ways of being better safe than sorry. In these days of COVID-19, we wear our face masks. We have acrylic shields built everywhere. We stay six feet apart. We're doing all kinds of things to ensure safe, not, not necessarily safety, but the, I want to say the illusion of safety, but I'm not sure that's appropriate. The appearance of safety and security, whether these things are effective or not. Now, I have a different take on face masks because my three summers of 
college, I worked at Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing, and I actually made industrial face masks and face masks to protect people against different, you know, pathogens and things like that. So I have a different understanding of the effectiveness of face masks, these and the cloth ones that I actually wear. I wear a little cute purple face mask when I go out, not that I'm going out that much, because I want to be better safe than sorry. I want to do what I can to positively impact my environment, my life, and everyone around me. So curious how you feel about, what do you think about this particular idiom and expression? Have you made massive changes in your business, assuming your business is open, because of this current pandemic to be better safe than sorry, to ensure that your customers feel safe and secure coming in and patronizing your business? And have you done things personally to make sure that you are better safe than sorry, your kids are better safe than sorry? I do it with my grandkids, my my kids as well. We have uh, health challenges in our family. So we are probably erring on the side of caution a lot more than many people. And, and we're doing that not as a sacrifice, not uh, out of fear. We're doing it out of in, an intelligent choice to do what's right for us and the people we love and care about. My daughter just had a, a newborn baby, so for sure we were going to make sure we are especially careful around her. I have health challenges. My son has health challenges. My son-in-law has had major surgeries on his neck and things, so we all wanted to be super duper careful. And there's other people in the family too. My mom's 84 and things, and so we want to be careful around the people that we love and care about. That is an example of being better safe than sorry. Love to know your examples of better safe than sorry and how this idiom has impacted you, your life, your business. Share in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll be with you tomorrow with another interesting idiom. We're focusing on Proverbs for the first 100 days of 2021. Why? Because I felt like it. And so I felt like reviewing some of the more common, the 100 most popular or 100 or so most popular Proverbs because Proverbs are, of course, idiom. Are Proverbs always true? Up to you to decide that. All right. Have a great day. I'll be with you tomorrow.